Hello, I'm Jeff Quinn. Back in 2017, Nebraska celebrated its 150th anniversary, the sesquicentennial. I put together a magic show called Aber Nebraska that I thought would be just perfect for schools, and schools loved it. I got it into over 10% of the elementary schools in the state of Nebraska, and it was great. It talks about all kinds of uh, history of Nebraska, some of the strange facts about Nebraska, things that are really interesting. Some things maybe even adults don't know. So, I thought that in this day and age when we're all being quarantined at home, I put it online so that you can learn a little bit about Nebraska and have some fun too. So without any further ado, here's Abra Nebraska. How are you guys doing today? Doing okay? You guys were so quiet coming in here. That was fantastic. You guys deserve a round of applause. Give yourself a round of applause. That's great. As you heard, my name is Jeff Quinn. I'm going to do some cool magic tricks for you guys. You guys don't like magic tricks? Yeah. Uh, I'm so glad to hear that. Hey, one of you guys, especially you guys in the front. During the show, there's absolutely positively nothing scary. Nothing's going to jump out at you. No loud noises, no mass or anything like that. Just a lot of fun. You guys all like fun, right? Yeah. Oh, it's been wonderful. Good to see you guys. As you heard, I'm going to be doing a cool magic show for you today. It's called Abra Nebraska. I made that name up myself. Yeah. We're going to do some magic tricks and we're going to do some cool things about Nebraska. Some things you probably don't know. Some things that maybe, just maybe, even your teachers don't know. And they know just about everything. But when I was researching this show, I lived in Nebraska all my life. And I learned some things about Nebraska that I never knew. Some real cool things, so I'm so happy to share those with you. Well, for the thing you guys know that during the show, I will be meeting some volunteers from the audience. Some people that come up here and help me. And wow, he's going up already. Wow. Let me tell you how to pick my volunteers. I'm looking for people who are sitting up nice and straight. Teachers, that's trick number one right there. <laughs> Secondly, I'm looking for people who are paying attention. That means both watching and listening very carefully. If you're talking to your friends, mess around, goofed around, throw things around, chopping things out, I know you're not paying attention. Thirdly, I'm looking for people who are smiling. Oh man, terrific smiles. But a lot of missing teeth out there too. Last but not least, I'm looking for people who only raise their hand when I ask for volunteers. I haven't asked for it yet, so you can put your hands down. See, a lot of times I'm doing a show and I finish a trick, and people applaud, they clap their hands, automatically hands go in the air. I mean, I need anyone, so please only raise your hand when I ask for volunteers, okay? We're going to go back in time to start talking about Nebraska. We're going to go back about 25 or 30,000 years. That's older than your grandparents. I know, that's a long time ago. Back then, Nebraska was Nebraska. The United States wasn't the United States. In fact, there were no countries back then. Back then, about 25 or 30,000 years ago, things were a little bit different around here. Things looked different, and there were different animals. 25 or 30,000 years ago, if you, if you went outside, you might see an animal that looks like this. Yeah. This is called a smiling eye. That's the real man right there. But you may know it as a saber-toothed cat or a saber-toothed tiger. These were in this area way back a long time ago. It took this guy forever to brush his teeth at night. I mean, look at those. Those are some pretty big teeth. Yeah. Now there's another animal around here. In fact, this animal went on to become the Nebraska State Fossil. Who knows what the Nebraska State Fossil is? I can see this if you've been studying Nebraska again. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Dun, 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 dun. Do you know what Nebraska State Fossil is? No, you just forgot. I hate it when that happens. Maybe way back there, we're in the gray, the young lady there. Yes, do you know what it is? fossil ever discovered was discovered in Lincoln County, Nebraska, just about a hundred years ago. I've got a question for you guys. That huge fossil, how do you think it was discovered by a scientist? Okay, they discovered a lot of stuff. Oh, okay, great. Okay, hands down, hands down. How many people think it was discovered by a teacher? Maybe a teacher, like one of your teachers discovered by this kind of, yeah, okay, okay, hands down, hands down. How many think it was discovered by a student, a kid like one of you? Yeah. Just discovered a lot of things. Cool, okay? Hands down, hands down. How do you think it was discovered by a chicken? Is that silly? Is that okay? Okay. Well, the real answer is that huge fossil was discovered by the chicken. Yeah, right. Yeah. Here's how 
how it happened. One day, a farmer and his wife were looking out their window. They saw a chicken pecking at something in the yard. They thought, what in the world is that chicken pecking at? So they went out and they looked. They discovered it was a bone. The chicken was pecking at a bone. So they moved some dirt away. That's that. was another bone. Big bone. Moved the dirt away, there was another big bone. They thought, we better, we better talk to someone about this. So the university eventually came out. They dug everything up. They dug up that entire skeleton. They put it all together. And it's on display right now in Elephant Hall down at the, the, the university, uh, university of Nebraska at Lincoln. It's on display right there. They named it. His name is Archie. Archie? Yeah, Archie the mammoth. Do you guys want to know about how big Archie was? Okay, he was pretty big. Let me show you. I've got something in this bag that's going to help me show you just about how big Archie was. Let me see. Let me, let me stand here and grab this. Hang on, guys. Let me grab feet tall, but Archie was taller than eight feet tall. Archie was about this big. Yeah. Archie was between 13 and 14 feet tall. Imagine something this big walking around in your backyard. Wouldn't that be cool? That'd be kind of scary. Yeah. And here's another fact. This is absolutely true. If something this big was walking around in my backyard, my chihuahua would bark at it. <laughs> my chihuahua's not too bright. Okay, so now you know about how big a, a mammoth was. Give yourself a big round of applause. You learned something here today. Yeah. Right. Let's this guy right back here. Let's see what else we, what else we have. We're going to move up in time. We're going to move up the timeline several thousand years. Uh, before this land was part of the United States. You know, Nebraska, the area that's Nebraska, wasn't always a part of the United States. Some other countries owned it. I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. But first of all, let me show you this. This is called the three tube trip. I've got three tubes here. I've got this tube, the red tube, I've got the blue tube, that's the second tube. Now the red tube is empty. Nothing inside the tube. I can look at you through the tube. I can talk to you through the tube. I can wave at you through the tube. Nothing inside this tube. This tube is just barely big enough to fit over the second tube right here. That's important to remember. The second tube, the blue tube, is also empty. Nothing inside the tube. I can look at you through the tube. I can talk to you through the tube. I can wave at you through the tube. I am Nothing inside this tube. This tube is just barely big enough to fit over the third tube right here. Now, the third tube is clear. You can see through the tube. You can see inside the tube. Would you reach inside, touch the bottom, and see if there's anything in there except that mouse trap? No, there's no mouse trap in there. It's pretty empty. All right, not for long. Watch this. I'll take the blue tube, put it right here. I'll take the blue tube, put it on top. I'll take the red tube, put it on top, just like this. Snap my fingers, wave my hand, and then something kind of magical happens. It helps me teach you something. I told you that Nebraska wasn't always part of the United States. Another country owned this 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 land before the United States is, and that country was... Look at this, yeah. This is the flag of France, right there. France once owned this part of the country. Have you guys ever heard of the uh, Louisiana Purchase? Yeah. You guys have you guys in the back, you have, yeah. Louisiana Purchase, very important part of American history. That's when the United States bought the middle part of the country from France. And part of that middle part of the country was what is now Nebraska. So we were once standing on French soil right here. That's kind of cool. Now another country also had some claims to parts of what is now Nebraska. That country reached down here and grabbed us. It's all the way down there. Hard to reach down and grab. Let me see. I can get all the way down there. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Right here. This country right here. Spain. That's right. Spain once had some claims on what is now parts of Nebraska. So you learned something else today. Give yourselves another big round of applause. Well, before Nebraska was part of the United States, before it was part of Spain, before it was part of France, we have to remember there were other people living here. 
the Native Americans, the American Indians, they lived here. Back in about 1850, there were six major Great Plains tribes who were calling Nebraska home. Those were the uh, Omaha, the, the Oto Missouri, Ponca, Pawnee, Lakota, and Cheyenne. They all lived in this area. They all lived within what is now Nebraska. Now, I want to do something that's really kind of neat. A lot of those tribes used feather loops in their rituals, in their ceremonies, in their celebrations. So I'm going to use some feather loops to show you guys something that's really kind of cool. These feather loops are all pure white. Right there. I've got one, two, three white feather loops right there. And nothing else inside the bag. I'm going to take one of these feather loops. Put it in just like this. Now let's see, I've got these scarves here too. I'll take the uh, loop, put it in one side, out the other, just like that. Give it a little tug. This is cool. Reach inside. Let's take this one. Let's take the other white one right here. Shove it in one side. Right there. Right at the top. I'll take the yellow. Put the yellow, put it in one side, and out the other just like that. Even it up. Snap the fingers. Wave the hand. Reach inside. And... I got one more. One more right here. The white one. Put it right in there. Take the red scarf. Put it in one side. Out the other just like this. Snap the fingers, wave the hand, and then cut. Would you help me with something? Come on up here. Hi. What's your name? Isaac. Round of applause for Isaac. Okay. Each of their problems smile. Good job. That was terrific. Let's give Isaac a big round of applause. Thanks for We've got three there and nothing else inside the bag. But you know what? I want to try something that I've never tried before. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah! I'm going to take these three loops right here. I don't need the scarves just yet. I'm going to take the blue, the yellow, the red. I'm going to put them all in at once. I'm going to see if I can make them go back to being pure white. I'll take the red scarf, the yellow scarf, the blue scarf, and circle them up like this. Put them in one side, out the other. Let's see if this works. Okay, even more. Here we go. Snap the fingers. Wave the hand. Reach inside, and now they all go back to being pure white. Isn't that amazing? I know, that's just a good one. I don't know, they're supposed to go back to pure white, they're pure white. Um, wait a minute. His name was Harry Houdini. Yeah, you guys have heard of Harry Houdini? Yeah. Harry Houdini was the most famous magician who had ever lived. But back in 1899, Harry Houdini wasn't famous. Nobody knew about Harry Houdini. Well, very few people did anyway. He wasn't famous and he was discouraged. He was ready to give up on magic and start doing something else. But then he got a telegram from a man named Martin Beck. Now, Martin Beck, he owned a series of theaters all across the United States called the Orpheum Theaters. Now, back then, theaters were different than they are today. They didn't have movies like we do today. They had live performances. They had singers and jugglers and actors, and they had magicians, too. Well, Harry Houdini got a telegram in 1899 from Martin Beck that said, Saw your act. Would like to make you an offer for next season. You start in Omaha. 
So Omaha was where Harry Houdini got his first big break. And he always appreciated Omaha for that. He always liked Omaha for that. In fact, he wrote on that telegram, he said, this telegram changed the course of my life forever. So he always liked Omaha. So, in honor of that, I want to do a trick that Harry Houdini might have done had this thing been invented back then. Harry Houdini was a good magician, but he was, he, was, he was an even better escape artist. He could escape from anything. He could escape from handcuffs, from shackles, from manacles. He could escape from straight jackets. He could even escape from jail cells. He could escape from anything. But these weren't invented back then, so we never had a chance to try to get out of them. I'm going to try to get out of them today. These are called thumb cuffs. Thumb cuffs go around the thumb. Now, the reason thumb cuffs were invented is because sometimes people's wrists are so small they can slip out of handcuffs. But thumb cuffs you cannot get out of because you see they have these little ridges back there, kind of like teeth. When your thumb goes in there and these lock on, it presses down against the teeth, and you cannot pull your thumbs out. So I need someone to help me out. I need a volunteer. Teachers, stop volunteering your students. Okay, no. I need someone who's strong. Like with big bulging muscles and everything like that. I don't know what to play. This is the, the green and dark stripes right there. Yeah, you look pretty strong. Would you like to have me out? Great, come on up here. This is going to be so cool. All right. These are baby okay, things. Hi. Thank you so much for coming up. What's your name? Elijah. Round of applause for Elijah. I got to help us out. Elijah. Check those out. Are those, are those made of metal? Yeah. Now you're feeling the teeth right there. Those ridges, are they kind of pointy and everything? They're not made of rubber or anything like that. They're, they really are made of metal. Yeah. Now when this cracks down like this, is, is there any way of pulling that back up? No. It gets locked in there. So your thumbs are locked in there. All right. Now, Elijah, right over here, I have some keys. These keys go in there and they'll unlock this. If I get into trouble, you let me out. Okay, do you promise? Otherwise, it's going to be a real short show. Okay, good. That goes right there. Now, I've got the lock right there. You want the lock facing away from me or facing toward me? Facing toward me? Okay. I'll put one thumb in there. I'll put one thumb in there. All right, Elijah. Use your superhuman strength and press those down to lock me in. Okay, press them all the way. Oh, oh man. What about two clicks too many? Oh, no. My thumbs are in there. My thumbs are starting to turn white. Look at that. You're cutting off the blood flow right there. This is going to be tough. Okay. Houdini would never get out of something in front of everyone, okay? He'd always be like behind a curtain or in a box or in a bag or something like that. And uh, I've got that covering covering my table, that white covering. Could you uh, take that off of there? And that cloth right there? Right. And the hole. And my thumbnails are turning purple. My thumbs are starting to get numb. Okay, this is going to be hard. Okay, put that right over my hands. Okay, just like this. Okay, now with my hands covered, I'm going to try, I'm going to attempt to get out of these thumb cuffs. It's going to be real tough because you didn't look that strong sitting there. I have to tell you, you really locked me in there really good. Okay, but I'm going to try to get out of it. I don't know if it's going to be possible because my thumbs are really locked good. They're turning white and everything. Okay, so let's see. Let me get this in here. Okay. Good. This may take me a while, because I haven't practiced this a whole lot, and you really locked me in there pretty good. But I'm going to try to get out of here on the count of three. Okay? So I count to three. Okay. So everyone count with me, okay? One, two, three. And I'm out. Elijah, you did a great job. Let's give Elijah a great big round of applause. Well, well, that, it really did cut into my thumbs. My thumbs. We were in there. Boy, and that, that really hurt my thoughts were kind of numb. So, Harry Houdini, the greatest magician who ever lived, got his first big break here in Omaha, Nebraska. That is kind of cool. We magicians really like knowing about that. But other things got their start in Nebraska too. Some things that you may not know about. We had a holiday that got started here in Nebraska. Who knows what holiday got started in Nebraska? Okay, yeah, do you know? Just forgot. Oh, I hate it when that happens. So, okay. In the orange right there, what holiday started in Nebraska? 
There must be something in the water. You forgot too? Oh, okay, uh, right, thank you, though, do you know? Nebraska's birthday? Well, yeah, it's technically that did get started here in Nebraska. But, uh, no, it was, it was in, wait, your hand's going like this, I think you know. Yes, do you know? What, Thanksgiving? But we celebrate Thanksgiving, but it didn't start here. Arbor Day! Arbor Day started in Nebraska, in, 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 in Nebraska City, Nebraska is where Arbor Day started, yeah. But other things got their start here in Nebraska too. In fact, these vice grip flyers. These were invented in Nebraska. TV frozen dinners were invented in Nebraska. The McRib sandwich invented in Nebraska. Yeah. And something was invented in Nebraska that should not have been invented in Nebraska. There's no reason for it to be invented in Nebraska, but it was invented in Nebraska. Ladies and gentlemen, the ski lift. What? I'll ponder that for just a moment, would you? Yeah, the ski lift. Nebraska's pretty flat, but the ski lift was invented in the state of Nebraska, so that's kind of cool knowing that too. And um, something else was invented in Hastings, Nebraska. Who knows what was invented in Hastings, Nebraska? There's something I know you guys all know about. Way in the back, what was invented in Hastings? What? in Hastings, Nebraska. I knew that I could not go to Hastings, Nebraska and do a show on Nebraska, talk about things invented in Nebraska, in Hastings, Nebraska, without doing a Kool-Aid trick. So do you guys want to see my Kool-Aid trick? Yeah! All right, I got a Kool-Aid trick for you guys. Let me see if we can move this right up here. Perfect. I've got some water right here in my little pot. And I've got one, two, three, Four glasses right there. What's your favorite flavor of Kool-Aid? Blueberry. 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 Blueberry.
Clay applied for the uh, the NASA space program 15 times. He got rejected every time. But on the 16th time, he kept on trying, trying, trying. On the 16th time, he got accepted. He got shot into space, and he spent some time on the International Space Station. So he's really a, a, a great Nebraska hero. So that's kind of cool. Clay Anderson from Ashland. You know who this is? No. No. This is Warren Buffett. Yeah. Warren Buffett, incredible businessman, one of the wealthiest people in the entire world. And he's from Nebraska. In fact, he still lives here in Omaha. Let's see. We have this. Do you know who that is? This is Hillary Swank. Hillary Swank is a two-time Academy Award-winning actress, and she grew up in Lincoln. So we have an award-winning actress from Nebraska. Okay? You know who this is? Very good. Yeah, this is Willa Cather. Yeah. Pulitzer Prize winning author Willa Cather. Now she wasn't born in Nebraska, but she moved here at a young age and she lived here for a big part of her life and she did some of her best writing here in Nebraska. So we claim her, okay? You know who this is? No, not Red Cloud, no. This, this is something that I think everyone should know. In my opinion, this is one of the most important people to come from the state of Nebraska. This is Ponca Chief Standing Bear. All right. Now, Standing Bear Lake is not too far from here, and I live right by Standing Bear Lake for many years. I always thought they called it Standing Bear Lake because when you look at it this way, it looks like a bear that's standing up. But no, it was named after this guy here. He is one of the first civil rights leaders from the state of Nebraska. He got a lot of rights for the American Indians way back a long time ago, so we owe him a big debt of gratitude, a famous Nebraska. And we have this. Do you know who that is? No, it's not Donald Trump. <laughs> Same job though, yeah. U.S. President, this is Gerald R. Ford. He was born in Omaha. Okay, then we go back to Clay Anderson. Okay, Charlie, hold on to those for you, please. Remember again, hold on to the bottom so they don't slip out there. They're plastic, they're kind of slippery. And Adrian, we have the same ones for you. There we have Gerald R. Ford. We have Chief Standing Bear. We have Willa Cather. We have Hillary Swank. Warren Buffett. And Clay Anderson, right there, okay? And hold on to those with your hand on the bottom. We're going to do a little game, all right? I got this thing right here that says, being from Nebraska is great. Now, I didn't have enough room to put the entire word Nebraska there, so we just have N-E, period. That's the abbreviation for Nebraska, okay? We're going to do a game where I'm going to pick someone from the audience for the first word, the letter B, the first letter in the first word. That person is going to say red or blue. If they pick red, Harley, what you do is you take one from the back and move it to the front. Okay? If they pick blue, you take one from the back, move it to the front. Got it? I'll help you along. It's going to be real easy once you get rolling here. So, who wants to do the first letter, the letter B? You're right front and center, the letter B. Do you want red or blue? Blue. Okay, take one from the back. There we go. Move it to the front. Terrific. That's perfect. Okay. Now, we have the letter E. Okay, the letter E. Okay. Who should do the letter E? Red. Okay, one from the back, move it to the front. Great. Okay, now we need the eye. Okay, way in the back in the purple right back there. Who should do the eye? Red or blue? Blue. Okay, there's the eye. Now we need the N right there. Oops. There you go. Yeah, please put it back where you got it from. Okay, who should do the N? Blue. Okay, terrific. Okay, now we need the G right there. Who should do the G? Red. Okay, let's see if this works out. Turn over the one on the back. Yeah, turn over this one, see who we have. Okay, hold on to the rest of them. I'll take this. There we have Willa Cather. Turn over the one on the back right there. And there hey, we have a match. Two Willa Cathers. Let's give them a big round of applause. That's cool. All right. We're going to do the word from. F-R-O-M. Who wants to do the first letter? Okay, way in the pink right there. Who should do the F? Red. Okay. There's the F. Cool. Now we need the R, okay? Ooh, in the, the leopard spots way back there. Who should do the R? Red! Now we need the O, okay? The other leopard spots right here. Who should do the O? Blue. Okay. Okay. Now we need the M, okay? The last one. Okay. Who should do the M? Red. All right. Turn over the one on the back. Turn over the one on the back. There we have Gerald R. Ford and... We have another match, another big round of applause for these guys. That is so cool. All right. Now we have the abbreviation for Nebraska, N-E, period, okay. In the red jacket there, who should do the N? 
Blue. Okay. Now we need the E. Okay. In the ooh, the black. Well, they're jack right there. Who should do the E? Red. Okay. Now we need the period, the dot right there. Who should do the dot? Blue. Okay. All right. Cool. Turn over one on the back. Turn over one on the back. There we have two Hillary Swanks right there. Wow. That is pretty cool. This is working out okay. okay. Now, easy word is is just two letters. Way in the back, way, yeah, way back there. Hi, how's it going? Who should do the I? Blue. Blue. Now we need the S right here, okay? Let's see the S. Who should do the S? Blue? Oh, what? No, right. Blue? Okay. Yeah, her. her. No, that's good in a minute. Okay. Okay, so did you? Okay, good. All right, turn over one in the back. Turn over one in the back. There we have another match. Man, this is turning out okay. Okay, tell you what, this is your turn now, okay? We have the word great, G-R-E-A-T. Who should do the G? Red? Okay. Now we need the R, okay? Right over there with these sparklies on. Who should do the R? Blue. Now we need the E, okay? Who should do the E? Red. Who should do the A? Hi, how's it going? Good to see you. Enjoying the show. Okay. So, do you think red or blue? Red. Okay, red. That's the A, okay. Of course. That's the E, right? E, okay. Now we need the A, okay? The A. This guy right here, the A. Red. Okay. Now we're down to the final one. This is going to make or break the trip. I would hate to be the person who picked the wrong person. You guys are still volunteering. Okay, here we go. The young lady in the tutu. It's, are you sure? Are you positive? Are you positively sure? Blue? Okay, blue. Okay, turn over one on the back. Turn over the one on the back. We have a match right there. Terrific. Now turn over the final one that you guys have right there. There it is. Clay Anderson. So cool. You guys did an awesome job. Give these guys a big round of applause. Give yourself a big round of applause. You guys look great. Thank you guys so much. I gotta do this. I gotta do this. This is one of my favorite things when I say, We're number one! Yeah. Yeah. We're number one! Yeah. We used to be number one in football! <laughs> 20 years ago. Okay. But we still have a real good football team, and I think we're gonna be number one soon. That's kinda cool. So we're number one. We're number one in other things, too. Some things that I didn't know about. Did you know? that Nebraska has more miles of river than any other state in the country. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Some people say that Omaha has the number one zoo in the world. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. You never heard of that. And in western Nebraska, central and western Nebraska, we have the Ogallala Aquifer. Because of the Ogallala Aquifer, we have more underground water than any other state in the country. That's kind of amazing, too. Okay. Oh, we're number two at something, so I got to go. We're number two at cattle production. Yeah. Texas is number one because they have more land down there, but we're number two. We have so many cows, so many head of cattle in Nebraska that they outnumber people over three to one. That's right, there are over three times as many cattle in Nebraska as there are people. So that's kind of interesting to know too. Oh, we're number one at something else. We're number one at this. We're number one at what's inside here. We're number one at popcorn. Yeah! Nebraska produces almost 30% of all the popcorn produced in the United States. That makes us number one. Movie theaters love us. Oh, they love us because they sell a lot of our popcorn. That's kind of cool. So I want to do a popcorn trick, but I need everyone to help me out, okay? Will you help me out with this? Good. You don't have to come up here. Everyone can help me out. What I want you to do is to snap your fingers. Here we go, yeah. Snap your fingers. If you can't snap your fingers, go. Yeah. 
good. Make those popping sounds. There we go. You're doing great. You're doing fine. Keep those fingers snapping. Keep those, keep those cheeks a popping. You guys are doing great. There we go. Snap your fingers. Pop your cheeks. Terrific. All right. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. You guys are doing fantastic. Time to get to Whoa. You guys hear that? Look at this. something in Nebraska corn huskers. Nebraska corn huskers, the colors are red and white. Red and white. Red and white, right there, yeah. Or they like to say scarlet and cream. What? That's a fancy way of saying red and white. It's red and white, red and white, red and white, boom, red and white. Trick of to you guys when I talk about the Nebraska Cornhusker football team. Now, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, they were not always known as the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They were known as other things, too. At one point, they were known as the Old Gold Knights. That's kind of a cool name, don't you think? At one point, the Nebraska Cornhuskers were called the Rattlesnake Boys. At another time, they were called the Bug Eaters. I don't think that really struck fear into the hearts of the opposing team. Here's up the bug eaters. So I was wondering why we're called the bug eaters. So I did some research. I looked it up. They were named after an animal called a bull bat. I didn't know what a bull bat was. I thought a bull bat was like a bat with horns on it. I didn't know. So I looked that up. And no, a bull bat isn't a bat at all. It's a bird that flies around the prairies and eats a lot of insects. So they were named after that bird. So that's why they're called the bug eaters. Now you know. All right. So here's the red and white trick I have for you guys, or the scarlet and cream trick. I'll take a red scarf, give it three shakes. One, two, three. Put it in my hand. So it goes in red at the top like that, comes out white at the bottom. Isn't that a cool trick? Red goes in the top like this, white comes out at the bottom just like that. We have red going in the top, white coming out the bottom. Red at the top right here, white at the bottom, just like that. We have red going in the top, white coming out. Red at the top, white at the bottom. That is one fantastic trick. It's kind of cool, I know. And I can tell by your stunned silence that you're just amazed by this trick. So tell you what I'm going to do, just for you guys, I'm going to make it go back to red. To make it go back to red, I take the white one right here. I shove it the top. So it goes in white at the top like that, comes out. Red at the bottom. I know that is pretty cool. White goes in the top, red comes out the bottom right there. We have white going in the top, red coming out the bottom. White at the top like this, red about just like that. White goes in the top, red about. White at the top, red about. That is one sweet trick. I know that's kind of neat. Thank you guys so much. How many people? How many people would like to see me take the red once again, make it turn to white? Okay, good. Just you guys will make it turn to white. Okay, to make it turn to white, I take the red one right here. I shove it in the top. Goes in red at the top like this. Comes out. White bottom like that. Red goes to the top, white comes out the bottom right there. We have red going to the top, white coming out the bottom. Look, what? Open your hand. Open my hand? Yeah. Really want me to open my hand? Yeah. Okay, I'll open my hand. Yeah. White bottom. Red goes to the top, white comes out the bottom right there. We have red going to the top, white comes out the bottom just like that. Red goes to the top, white comes out the bottom again. That is one fantastic. like to know how that trick is done. Okay, good. Just for you guys, I'll show you how it's done. You may have noticed when I started off, I was behind my table here for just a moment or two. What I was doing, I was taking this scarf here, the white one, I was shoving it down in my hand. I was hiding it in there. I didn't want you to see me doing it, so I was doing it back there. Now, I can't really do it right now because I have the red one in there so long. Let me pull the red one out put the red one right here so we all know where it is, okay? I was hiding the white one down in my hand. Now, I didn't want to come out like this because you're not supposed to know about the white scarf. It's supposed to be a secret. If I came out like this, you'd know about it. That would ruin the whole thing. I just shoved in there all the way. I didn't even want a little bit showing. So I shoved in there as deeply as I could, just like this. I came out holding this one, the red one. Now I'm ready to go. Now I can do the trick. One thing I need to remember is I do not, under any circumstances, want to open my left hand. <laughs> I could, I just don't want to. You see what I do is I take the ribbon right here, I start shoving the ribbon down my hands, it goes in, red the top like this, comes out, 
Why do I look like that? Now, if you pull the white one too hard, it comes out. That's not good. You don't want that to happen. If that ever happens, you take the white one and just kind of shove it up in there just like that. Then you can push the red on the top like this, white comes out the bottom just like that. Red goes in the top, white comes out the bottom, red on the top like this, white goes like that, red on the top, white on the bottom. That's how you do the trick. Any questions? Okay, good. We'll move right along now. Thank you for that thunderous round of applause, everybody. So there you go. Did you learn something new about Nebraska? I sure hope so. It's really a fantastic state. A lot of fun things going on in the Cornhusker State. Hey, I've got another show. It's called Kindness Counts. It talks about different ways that you can be kind and gentle and nice all year round. If you'd like me to come to your school and do that show, look at the website that's going to be on your screen in just a second or two. Talk to your teachers, talk to your principals, talk to your PTA or PTO. See if you can get me in there when the school comes back in session. Thanks again. Again, my name is Jeff Quinn. Everyone have a happy, fun, and most of all, a safe summer. Bye-bye.